that we this need to conference will now be recorded. Mentioning that we need to pray for Lonnie. Lonnie showed up. So we'll go ahead and pray and, and we'll get started. But Lord, I just thank you for this group. I mean, I thank you that Natalie is here and we're just so thankful that she is up and about and moving around and able to do what she can do. And we just pray for a continued uh, healing. And we just celebrate the fact that she is back in our midst and that we can celebrate her being with us today. Uh, Lord, we just lift up Ray, who just had all of his tests run today and is just not feeling good and has lost so much weight over the last couple of weeks. We just pray for him and that he can get his appetite back and can continue to hold food down and just doesn't, uh, that, that he can continue to heal as well. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for uh, Wayne to continue healing with Wayne and just pray that uh, the soreness goes away. And we're just thankful for just the fact that he is as healthy as he is and that nothing major happened to him in that wreck. Uh, Lord, we pray for Lonnie and just ask that you be with Lonnie as, as he's not feeling good. And we just pray for your healing touch to be upon him. Uh, just pray for my dad and my mom and just all the other concerns that we have. And uh, Lord, we just lift those up to you. It's in Jesus' name that we can and do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Also pray for those who couldn't be with us today and couldn't join us today, but we are going to be in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Matthew 17. Matthew 17. And we're going to do this the same way we did it last week. So this is interactive, Pete. So you're going to have to ask questions and stuff. So, so what we did last week is we just went through a, a discussion on how how to do Bible study on your own and how to just look at things on our own. And the, the process that we talked about when we were doing that was uh, that you read the text, you pray about the text, um, and then you begin asking questions about the text. And then after you ask those questions about the text, you begin to look at answers and you begin to enter into dialogue with other folks and and think about it and maybe read commentaries or look stuff up online. And then you then you do repeat that again. You ask more questions and you look at those. And and last week when we did that in, in Mark chapter two, we we had some really good questions that came up through that. So so I decided that we can do it again today. And this is the story of the transfiguration. And it's in Matthew 17, one through nine. So if y'all have any questions, if y'all have a question after we read it, those of you that are online, just go ahead and, and just turn your microphone on and, and say it, and we, we'll write those down and, and we'll look at them. But for all of us, we'll just be looking for things that we have questions about, and um, and then we'll look at those questions. So so we will just we'll just read through it right now. But um, so this is Matthew 17. And we're going to stop at verse nine. Uh, six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers James and John and led them up on a high mountain to be alone as the men watched jesus's appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light suddenly moses and elijah appeared and began talking with jesus um, peter exclaimed Lord, it's wonderful us to, for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Then Jesus came over and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone and they only saw Jesus. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, don't tell anybody what you have seen until the son, has been son of man has been raised from the dead. So I'm going to read it one more time. So what we're doing when we read this is we look at things that just we question or we stand out to us. And um, just anything that stands out, we, we make notes of those, and then we mention it again here in a second. So Matthew 17, 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up on a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance 
was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah began Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Then Jesus came over and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they, they saw only Jesus. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So there's our story for today. And um, I think most of y'all have probably read that story before or heard that story before. It's a pretty popular story. But what are some questions that y'all might have about that? Um, what are some questions that might help us understand the text better? Do y'all have any questions, anything that stood out to y'all in that? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't he want them to tell anybody? Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Why... Did Jesus say not to tell anyone? Okay, that's a great one. So why did Jesus say not to tell anyone? What other questions do y'all have? Why did he just put Peter and James and John? So yeah, so Pete, Pete's here and Pete just said, you know, why did he take Peter, James and John? And not the other disciples. That's a good question. What other questions do y'all see there? Anything? So one of the questions I, you know, I have, it, it's it. Oh, go ahead, Lonnie. Yeah, how did they know it was Moses and Elijah that appeared? Yeah. How did they know it was Moses and Elijah? Yeah, that's a good one. One of the questions I have um, is in uh, Um, there, verse, suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Uh, what were they talking about? What were Jesus, Moses, and Elijah talking about? And the reason I'm uh, saying it like that is because I'm typing it in my phone. So I'm, I'm saying it as fast. As, but what were they talking about? Um, and could could the disciples could the disciples hear the discussion? Um, one of another question I have, and then we'll get to some of yours. But um, how far away was Jesus? Was Jesus like right next to him, and he and all of a sudden? He transformed and became this glowing figure, but you know how how close was Jesus when this happened? And and could they, you know, my could they like was it hot? Did it? I mean, was it? Could they sense it? Besides anything, besides just their sight. And you know, and, and could they sense it? Any other questions y'all have? All 
think I think one that that I would look want to look at into deeper is um, has this ever happened before? You know, where else in the scripture has somebody um, has their has have they their appearance changed? Moses. Yeah, Moses did. So that's but so that's I think that's a very important. When I asked that, Peter Pete answered the question. And he says it happened to Moses. So you know, you know who else has this happened to? What were they doing for six days? Okay, so so Richard had a good question. His question was, you know, what were they doing six days earlier? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because it says after six days. So what were they doing during those, you know, for those six days? Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I think they're I think they're just saying six days after the last the last story. So, but I, I do let me pull that up on my phone real quick, and we can look at that real quick. Um, so that the thing that happened right before that was Jesus predicted his own death. So Jesus was with them, and he predicted his own death. And uh, this is right after uh, Peter declared that Jesus was the Messiah. So this is when Peter makes the declaration about Jesus being the Messiah. And then right after that, Jesus predicts that the Messiah, he is going to die. And right before that, uh, he gives some teachings about the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law. So, so I think that's real important. That's a great question that Richard had. You know, what happened right before this? Because um, a lot of times the context of what is around what we're looking at is very important. Jesus just talked about the fact that he was the Messiah and that he, or that Peter just declared him to be the Messiah. And then Jesus just said, that he was going to die. So I think that's uh, pretty important. And it might have a, a lot to do with what he and Moses and Elijah were talking about. So, so that that's a, a great question. Um, uh, so th there's a bunch here. Um, you know, why did Peter, Peter, saw this going on and he saw he, he saw Moses and Jesus and Elijah having this conversation and Peter just couldn't stand it right Peter just <laughs> he's like oh my goodness so his response was we need to build a place to remember this we need to build a a shelter a, a place of worship for y'all we need to we need to fix this into time this this happening and uh, he he just was like, oh, we gotta we gotta make three shelters as memorials for you, one for Moses, one for you, and one for Elijah, you know. So so why did why couldn't Peter just sit there? I mean, because what if Jesus? What if they were right there, where where Pete is? Why couldn't Peter just be quiet to listen to what they were talking about, or you know, absorb? But he just he had to do something. He just you know. Yeah, yeah. Pete said it was probably because he was ignorant and he just didn't know what he was talking about. But, but why did Peter just have to, you know? And that's kind of Peter's mo anyway. He he always says and does stuff before he thinks. You know, he's always the first one. You know, chops the guy's ear off, and there, you know, he he does a lot of stuff. Um. So, but after that, after he spoke, so it's it's like. Jesus is having this moment with Moses and Elijah, and that when when Peter interrupted it, that's when God spoke. And, and so God spoke when Peter interrupted what Jesus was doing with Moses. And so why did why did God choose to speak at that moment? I think that would be a good question. Is you know why wasn't God speaking, or was God speaking? 
Uh, yeah. If you say found the resurrection. Yeah. Um, and, and so here's another one. Um, what, you know, what were the bright things in that day? You know, what, what else was, what else was bright besides Jesus? And, and we know that it's this bright cloud that all of a sudden appeared overhead, right? So what is that? What is the brightness? And when this bright cloud began to overshadow, and then all of a sudden this voice comes out, this voice comes out, and it says, this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. Um, so I've always wondered, uh, did did the disciples could the disciples hear what God said in the cloud? Could the disciples hear what Jesus, Moses, could could they was it happening? You know, and I mean, who all could hear what God said there? Um, I would think that the the disciples could you would think that the disciples heard it, but um their response is why did there's why did the disciples respond the way that they did? Yeah. They fall on their faces and were much afraid. Yeah. So so why did they respond that way? They were terrified and they fell down on the on their the ground. Yeah. They fell down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they'd been talking just right before this. They said if they knew that Jesus was the Son of God, that Jesus was God, you know, why all of a sudden were they terrified when they'd been essentially talking to Jesus, talking to God for the last two and a half years or however long they'd been wandering around, right? I mean, because the the story right before this was with that you're the messiah you're the son of man so all right let's look at the next one uh i think why did jesus touch them you know that's i think that's significant that jesus came over and touched them jesus came over and touched them and um i think that's significant because okay earlier pete asked this question we we asked the question on uh, who had this happened to before, and when this happened before, it was Moses that turned really bright when he was in God's presence, and God was giving him the the law on Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, and all the rest of the law that he was given. And if you remember in that that story, um, Moses couldn't even face God. Like it says that God, that Moses turned away and that God passed and passed next to him. And all that, that, um, that Moses saw was essentially the word, what it would mean, it would be the wake. Um, like, you know, when you're on a boat and it says the backside, I think in our scripture, it'd say the backside, but what that word really means is like the wake. Like when you're in a boat and you're going and it creates this wake. And, and really that's kind of what Moses saw. He didn't see God. He saw the evidence of God passing by him. He saw the wake. He saw that whatever, as God went by, it stirred stuff up. And it just, he saw the evidence, the un, undeniable evidence that God's presence just went by. He saw the wake of, of what happened. So. So the first time this happened, uh, Moses, he couldn't face, he couldn't look at God. He couldn't touch God. He couldn't do any of that. And it changed his appearance. So I think it's real important to see that whose appearance changed this time. Jesus's did. And Jesus's appearance was just like the cloud where they knew God was. It was very bright and 
and and all of this. So and then and then God Himself, Jesus, comes up and He touches them. So this is much different, you know, because in the past, in the Old Testament, if you were in the presence of God, like if you went into the Holy of Holies and you were sinful and I mean you would die, you know, and they'd have to pull you out by a string because it was so but this is different here here jesus is he is clearly god because he has the same translucence the transfiguration the brightness all of that but he went up and the first thing he did was he touched him so he touched him so and then the next thing he did so what did he do after he touched him he, he said get up and then the next thing he did is he he spoke to him and he said don't be afraid don't be afraid um so uh and then the question that we asked earlier as they went back down the mountain jesus commanded them don't tell anyone what you have seen until the man until the son of man has been raised from the dead um so any other questions or comments or things that y'all saw in that Nobody even known the crucifixion if they were so scared of God. Why did they not try to interfere whenever they were trying to crucify Jesus? Yeah. Um, I mean, because that's what's coming, and they know that God is, you know, terrified to die. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, and, and I, of course, it's God's plan that that Jesus was was going to be died, killed. Yeah. We, we yeah. What saying, why didn't they? Yeah, well, Peter, and that's a good question. What what Richard said is, well, if they knew all this, why didn't they try to interfere when Jesus was being killed? And I think Peter Peter did say, oh, you'll never die. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I'll die with you. And then Peter even denied. You know, Peter was afraid. Right. Peter was afraid. So um, Peter was afraid. So. So that that that's also a good question that we can look at. Um, you know, where did Moses and Elijah go? You know, how did they get there? Was it really a physical body, or was it some sort of, you know, hologram? <laughs> you know, what what was it? Were they really there? How did they get there? You know, and why was it Moses? Why was it Elijah? You know, so those are all questions that we asked earlier, and we we could spend. A very large amount of time discussing these but any other questions that stood out and then we'll, we'll look at a couple of these questions that we had and and look at it a little bit more any other questions all right um, let me scroll back in here to some of the questions um, you know okay here, here's here's one question I think Pete asked this, but why did he take Peter and James and John and not the other disciples? What are y'all's thoughts on that? Why Peter, James, and John and not the other disciples? Were they the favorites? <laughs> Maybe they were the more favorite the time. They were all together, but these four decided to go up on the hill. So, so what Pete said was, Pete said that um, maybe they were the favorites. Jesus' favorites. <laughs> what were you about to say something? <laughs> Teacher's pet. Okay. And you were saying maybe the others weren't there. Well, so. I mean, you know, the other. Yeah. Well, they were the ones that were there. Yeah. I think they probably were all together. And, and Jesus, it says Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them. So I think it was like Jesus said, hey, you three, come with me. We're going to go up there. So, um, so I don't know why, uh, why just these, but, um, you know, why didn't they take Matthew? Matthew's the one that is writing this story right here. He's the one that wrote this, this, this gospel. But, um, I think that the teacher's pet comment and, and Peter's, uh, Pete's comment that they were his favorites. I think that's probably the right answer. I think that he was closer to Peter, James, and John than he was the other disciples. I think he just, we know that we know that 
that, um, you know, in the Gospel of John, John refers to himself as the one that Jesus loved. <laughs> you know, he pridefully says the one that Jesus loved. And we know that Jesus, we talked about this Mother's Day. We know that Jesus, when he was dying, he looked at John and said, John, this is your mother. Mother, this is your son. And he transferred his responsibility for Mary to John. So I do think that this was like his, his closest most trusted friends on earth, right? Most trusted friends on earth. Um, so I, I think that's why he took them is because this this was his, his his closest people. And he probably wasn't ready to to have to explain it to everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. So he he wanted somebody to see it and to know that it happened, but he didn't want to have to be answering all these questions to everybody. So he made sure it was the the three that meant the most to him. Um, you know, how I think Lonnie said this. How did we know it was Moses and Elijah? I don't know. They have names on, or maybe it was just something that that God just revealed, and when they saw, they just knew because we know that Elijah had a pretty distinct look about him. You know, he. He wore uh, animal skins and was real rough. And we know that Elijah was a big burly man that was pretty tough and was a great warrior as well as a prophet and, and all of this. So, so the only thing I can think of, unless Jesus told them later, hey, that's Moses and Elijah, but I don't think that happened because of Peter's response. He said, hey, we need to build a shelter for, for Jesus, for Peter, and, and one for Moses. So I guess it's just something that they they just knew, you know, that they just knew. And, you know, so that's a question for us. When Jesus comes back, are we just going to recognize it? Are we just going to know? You know, maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's the same thing. Richard, you're about to say something? Oh, no, I was just thinking maybe it was something that he got planned for him later after he was gone. He was going to have a talk with him. Their roles coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Um, okay. I think one of the most important questions that we ask today is what were Jesus, Moses, and Elijah talking about? What were Jesus, Moses, and Elijah talking about? We don't know, but what do we think they might have been talking about? Are they treating you? <laughs> How are they treating you? Yeah. It's yeah. just a friendly conversation. Huh? <laughs> I, I think, um, I think that when Abraham came and started started everything and had Isaac and had Jacob and the twelve sons and the nation of Israel came and then Moses came and and delivered the people. Um, out of Egypt, and then later Elijah came, and he played such a vital role in telling uh, God's role and what God was doing, and to make sure to turn and go towards God. And and uh, I think Moses and Elijah, Moses especially, and then probably next Elijah, probably played the biggest roles in what God had been in God's plan of redemption up until this point. So I, I, I kind of think Moses and Elijah came there and they were checking in on Jesus saying, all right, how's the plan going? You know, this is how, how's this whole redemption story going that we, that was started so long ago that we've been talking about. And then everything that we've been talking about and did is pointing to you. So I kind of think Moses and Elijah were there just kind of, encouraging Jesus, uh, getting an update, you know, whatever. I, I don't know exactly what it was, but I think those two people had major roles in God's plan of salvation and major roles, especially with the, the old covenant. And now there's about to be a new covenant. And then everything with Elijah being this huge spoke person, probably the greatest prophet that there was in the Old Testament. And now they're meeting with Jesus who is definitely being used by God, who is God, 
to, to fulfill this thing. So I think they were talking about what we just looked at in the context that Richard pointed out earlier. They were talking about, okay, people now understand that you're the Messiah. You're the one sent by God. And you just told them that you're going to die because of it. And I think they were talking about that, saying, okay, we're getting close to the end now. People have recognized you as the Messiah. You've told them that you're going to die. It, you know, and I think that's kind of what they were talking about. I think that. Yeah, yeah. And I think God was there in the presence of Jesus because he was the one shining and was bright. And it was almost like when Jesus was in their presence, it was like God. It wasn't like it was that God was discussing what was going on with Moses and Elijah. And he might have been filling them in on, hey, remember when this happened? Remember, this is what it's all about. You know, this is this is what that all meant. And this is, you know, you talked about sacrificing the perfect lamb in the Passover when you delivered people out of out of Egypt. I am the perfect lamb. You know, he might have just been filling them in on what was going on. So uh and then God shows up. God the Father shows up and, and he speaks and he speaks. So um let's see what time it is. Seven seven oh eight. We'll we'll look at one more. Um uh let's talk about the, the part about what Jesus about what God said. Um this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy, listen to him. When else had God spoken like that about Jesus? Is there another time when God had spoken about Jesus like that? Can y'all think of one? Pete, can you think of one? Did God ever speak from a, name, from a cloud before? Anybody online, can y'all remember? What what Barbara? When Jesus when he was baptized. Barbara said when he was baptized. If you remember, when Jesus got baptized at the very beginning, he said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he said that really before Jesus had done anything. And so were these disciples there? Probably not, but they probably heard about that. And that's when the Holy Spirit came and descended down on God and the presence of God came uh, more fully onto God. I don't know if that's possible, but it says the Holy Spirit ascended on it. So this is the second time that God has spoken like that. The first time he says, this is my beloved son. This is my dearly loved son. It says the same thing here. And in uh, he, the first time he said, who am I well pleased? This time it says he brings me great joy. Um, listen to him. So I think the main, the main thing that we need to pay attention to, well, all three of those, um, this is my son. This is Jesus is my son. He's the son of God. That's really important. This isn't just a man. This is the son of God. This is, this is more than just being the Messiah and what you thought earlier. Not only is the Messiah is the Messiah, but he's my son. He's my son, um, and he brings me great joy. He brings me great joy. And then the last command is, is listen to him. And, uh, boy, I think that is a very appropriate um, instruction for all of us. You know, it's almost like God is saying to all of us, hey, y'all listen to him. Listen to the words of this because he's not just a man. He's my son. And everything that he's doing down here on earth is bringing me great joy. So, so listen to him. Listen to him. Um, any questions or comments? We, we've gone, it's about 710 now, so 711. But if y'all have any more things that stand out or any questions or comments, anybody online have anything that y'all would like to share there? All right, nobody else has anything. So, but what what we need to do that now is what I encourage y'all to do um, tomorrow is to think about this same text 
Matthew 17, one through nine, maybe pull it up on your phone and read it again and, and just be thinking about it. And then also begin to ask new questions about it as well. Just say, you know, because I think the more questions we ask, it's generally on about the third round of questions is when we really get to where we're asking some questions that really impact us. And uh, so I invite you over the next week to just spend some time thinking about Matthew 17, one through nine and, and what this means and ask questions. And then as we learned last week, uh, the last thing that we do is what that we have learned today can impact my life. You know, how can this impact me and change me now? And um, and I would say that the the one that I will focus on today is what God's words were uh, to, to Peter, James and John. Uh, when he spoke out of the cloud, he said, this is my dearly beloved son um, wh whom I who brings me great joy. Listen to him. So. Uh, we need to always recognize who Jesus is. We need to recognize that everything that he did brought God joy. And it was a part of this plan that Moses and Elijah were also a part of. And that it is very important that we listen to Jesus just as the people of Israel were supposed to listen to Moses and follow what Moses said, just as the people were supposed to listen to Elijah and listen to what Elijah said. Jesus is saying, hey, this one's greater than those. You really got to make sure to listen to this one. So I think that's probably where I would leave it today. So, all right, people online, I'm going to quit sharing my screen with y'all. So, all right, guys, we'll be blessed. It was fun hanging out with y'all, and I will see y'all Sunday. The next two weeks, we will not have uh, Bible study because I will be in Haiti and then that Sunday uh, that we get back we'll make the final call on um, whether or not we're going to do Bible studies in the summer I don't mind doing the Bible studies in the summer I really enjoy it but we might just do them online just we just haven't had that great of a turnout for the folks that come up here I love meeting y'all but um, but we'll make that decision I also love coming up here and eating even if it's just five or six of us so but y'all be blessed and we will see you Sunday at church.